Welcome to our next lecture on applications of integration. This is a really curious um, section that we're covering and specifically um, calculating the surface area for a solid of revolution. There is a proof in the text that I want you to read. It's about two or three pages long. Shouldn't take long, I would guess five or ten minutes, but it walks through the steps of how they um, go algebraically from different figures using algebra and geometry formulas that are known um, to get to the ultimate um, formula for the surface area for a solid of revolution. So I do want you to read that and I'll allude to it in this as well. So as part of the build of the proof, we're going to first consider the graph of f of x, which equals r over h times x on the interval from 0 to h, where h is greater than 0 and r is greater than 0. You can see this in the image below of both the line segments and the solid of revolution. When this line segment is revolved around the x-axis, it generates the surface of a cone of radius r and height h, again the figure below. A formula from geometry states that the surface area of a right circular cone of radius r and height h, excluding the base, is pi r times the square root of r squared plus h squared, which can be simplified to pi r l, where l is the slant height of the cone, that is the length of the slanted edge of the cone. And you can see this um, in the diagram below um, where it gives you the definition or the length of L as the square root of R squared plus H squared, which again is just another version of the Pythagorean theorem or an application, I should say, not another version of the Pythagorean theorem. With the result of the cone, we can solve a preliminary problem that will be useful. Consider the linear function f of x equals c, of c times x on the interval from a to b, where 0 is less than a is less than b, and c is greater than 0. When this line segment is revolved around the x-axis, it generates a frustum of a cone. This is a cone whose top has been sliced off, and you can see it in the third image, or the last image on the right. The goal is to find, this, find S, the surface area of the frustrum. Figure below shows that S is the difference between the surface area, S sub B, of the cone that extends over the interval 0B, and the surface area, S sub A, of the cone that extends over the interval 0A.
So let's see how to apply this. It's a very straightforward. I'd like you to um, try this problem on your own um, by hitting pause right now. Okay. Example one, using the surface area formula, and you can see the formula there, it's highlighted in yellow. The graph of f of x equals 2 times the square root of x on the interval 1, 3, is revolved around the x-axis. What is the surface area of the generated solid? So again, hit pause, set up the equation, and then go ahead and solve it. So we can see if we take the derivative of 2 times the square root of x, we get 1 over the square root of x. When we apply this into the surface area formula, it's pretty straightforward. We can see here the formula. Our f of x is 2 times the square root of x. 2 pi comes out in front because this is a constant or a coefficient, a multiplier, times the square root of 1 plus um, the derivative of f of x squared, since the derivative of f of x is 1 over the square root of x, this squared gives us 1 over x dx. And um, pulling out the 2 in front, we get 4 pi times the integral of the square root of x plus 1. Notice since we have a square root times a square root, we can go ahead and distribute this x. x times 1 is x. x times 1. 1 over x gives us 1. And so we have this much um, simplified um, integral or integrand that we can then solve and we get the values down here. So now let us look at example 2. This is an interesting example as well um, for a number of reasons. We're going to calculate the surface area of a spherical zone. A spherical zone is produced when a sphere of radius A is sliced by two parallel planes. In this example, we compute the surface area of the spherical zone that results when the first plane is oriented vertically and cuts the sphere in half, while the second plane lies h units to the right, where 0 is less than or equal to h is less than or equal to 2a which is the diameter, of course. And you can see that here in the diagram. Uh, the first uh, vertical cut is directly through um, the half of the sphere. So we have two hemispheres, one on each side. And then the second vertical cut to the right um, is h <clears throat> units apart. And then you can see the shape that is generated by that to the right. Show that the area of this spherical zone of width h cut from a sphere of radius a is 2 pi a h and use the result to show that the surface area of the sphere is 4 pi a squared. So this is a little more complicated than simply plugging in so you may just want to sit and watch this and make sure you follow along. This is directly from the text so if you need any um, to slow down you can go back and read through the steps etc. So I get that this problem is confusing. So when you don't know what to do, you know, try something. And we have a formula for the surface area of a solid of revolution. We've got a figure. And in that, form in that um, formula for the surface area, know the two things that we need. We need the limits, the um, the value on the integration limits, and that's pretty straightforward. Um, and then we also need a function. Well, our main object is a sphere. A sphere is created by um, a solid, you know, revolving a circle around the x-axis. So we can figure out the formula f of x by um, doing that, figuring out what the formula is for a circle. Well, the formula for a circle is x squared plus y squared equals the radius squared. So if we think about that formula, we really only need the, um, the formula for a semicircle, 
because if we revolve a semicircle around the radius, we're going to get a sphere as around the x-axis, we're going to get a sphere as well. <coughs> so instead of using y equals plus and minus the square root of a squared minus x squared, we can just use the positive value or where that formula occurs in quadrant one and quadrant two. So we have a value for f of x. Now we've, we've rewritten the equation, so it's y equals because we want it to be in terms of a function notation, f of x. So we get y equals the square root of the radius squared, which is a, minus x squared. Okay, that gives us this function, this curve, this semicircle curve above the x-axis. So the next thing we need to do is find the derivative of this. So this is a squared minus x squared um, to the power of one half. That's a pretty straightforward um, derivative. I'm not going to go through those steps. So we get f of x equals the square root of a squared minus x squared. The derivative of f of x is negative x times a squared minus x squared raised to the negative one half power. So this is a perfect time for you to pause. You've got the function here, and you even have the answer. The answer to the surface area of this um, spherical zone is 2 pi a h. So plug those values in and see if you can do the algebra. It's really good practice um, because this, you, know, you have to simplify it, and sometimes the simplification seems more difficult than the integration. So hit pause here and go ahead and try to solve this and see if you can get 2 pi a h. Okay? So this first line is just plugging in the values. Notice here, because we have negative one half, this is a, a fraction or a rational expression with a squared minus x squared in the denominator. So we have one plus negative x over the square root of a squared minus x squared squared, okay? <clears throat> So if we make this into uh, both of these with a common denominator of um, a squared minus x squared, right? Because we get negative, we get, um, I just went blank there, sorry. Um, we're squaring both the x and the, new, the negative x, so we get a positive x squared in the numerator, and then the denominator the square root squared is just going to be a squared minus x squared. But when you times this one by a squared minus x squared over a squared minus x squared, so you can add these two quantities, then it's going to simplify to the second line. Taking that integral, um, again, simplifying this even further, we can see that um, this simplifies down to simply the integral of a dx. Again, uh, multiplying these through, because you have two square roots times each other, you get um, the square root of a squared times the quantity of a squared minus x squared over a squared minus x squared, and then those will both cancel out, and you'll get the square root of a squared, which is just a dx, okay? So um, you can then apply that integral simply to a, and um, you'll get the function there. Now, the second part of this was to, to find the surface area of the entire sphere. And the surface area formula for a sphere is four pi radius squared. But how do we use this information or this information to get that? Now, you might be tempted to try to integrate this um, function y equals the square root of a squared minus x squared over the entire um, hemisphere or semicircle here. Because then I would get, if I revolve this around, I would get the entire um, area, surface area of the sphere. But there's a problem with that. Remember that our um, area, surface area formula only works if a function is um, differentiable over the entire closed interval. So that means it also has to be differentiable at a and negative a. But at a and negative a, our graph is going vertical, and the slope of a vertical line is undefined. So at a and negative a, this function, y equals the square root of a squared minus x squared, is not differentiable, so you can't do that. 
Notice if we instead moved H to A, if we apply the limit as H goes to A, as it's getting closer and closer and closer to A, then what we're going to have is the surface area of a hemisphere, of a hemisphere, excuse me, of a hemisphere. And if we multiply that by two, we'd get the surface area for the entire sphere. So this is actually, it's a, it's a kind of like a little puzzle again, a different way, but a couple hints here that you got to make sure that your function is differentiable over the whole um, closed interval. So if we apply the limit as H goes to A, Notice this is a very simple limit. All we do is plug in a for h and we get 2 pi a squared. And of course, that's the surface area of the hemisphere. And if we wanted the surface area of the whole sphere, we would just multiply that by 2. So our next problem, example 3, painting a funnel. This problem is more straightforward. Uh, there is one little twist and some simplification challenges. Um, so let's read the problem. The curved surface <clears throat> of a funnel is generated by revolving the graph of f of x equals x cubed plus 1 over 12x on the interval from 1 to 2 about the x-axis. Approximately what volume of paint is needed to cover the outside of the funnel with a layer of paint 0.05 centimeters thick? Assume x and y are measured in centimeters. So since we're looking to paint um, the outside of the funnel, we are actually looking for the surface area. We have a direct formula for the surface area of a surface of revolution. And so, and we even have the function here. So all we need is the derivative, plug it in, and then solve this problem. So I'd like you to go ahead and try this. These problems are really good for you to try on your own um, before you actually see the result to see if you can get through them. A lot of times in the calculus, this the algebraic simplification in this case it's one of those as well uh, that's not quite as obvious when you look at the the solution from the text so go ahead and hit pause plug in your values find your derivative plug in your values and then take your integral so our derivative is 3x squared minus 1 over 12x squared if we plug this into um, the equation we get this first integral up here we want to simplify, if at all possible, um, this um, the second part, the second factor in there. And if we multiply out 3x squared minus 1 over 12x squared, and then add 1 to it, surprisingly it becomes, and then you factor it again, you get 3x squared plus 1 over 12x squared. Um, it simply changes the sign um, in the middle of the binomial. Okay. And then, um, again, um, taking the integral of this, we get 12,289 over 192 pi, okay? So, a common mistake is thinking that we're done, okay? And so we're so focused in this chapter on finding the surface area of something, we forget to actually answer the question asked. And in this problem, we did need to find the surface area, but we needed to find that to figure out how much paint. And here we're looking for the volume of paint. And so we need the thickness on top of that of the paint. So all we have to do here is now multiply the surface area by the thickness of paint, and we'll get the entire volume of the paint. So be careful with these problems. They are challenging. This problem is not exactly easy to um, simplify. It's not quite um, intuitive when you look at it. And then it's not exactly the easiest integral to do as well um, with, through substitution. So we have one more example from this chapter. Um, and it's a good example because um, you need to be aware of which axes you're revolving around. So we're changing the perspective here. Remember that our formula that we have for surface area was over an interval that is differentiable over the entire closed interval and it's revolved around x. So if we're revolving around y, which we are in this problem, um, we need to change our, our function so that um, 
we no longer have functions of x, but we have functions of y and the derivative of the function of y. Um, so we just have to change f of x to f of y and f prime x to f prime y. Okay? So let's read the problem and then look at that first. Consider the function y equals the natural log of x plus the square root of x squared minus 1 all over the quantity of 2. Find the area of the surface generated when the part of the curve between the points 5 fourths and 0 and 17 eighths and the natural log of 2 is revolved around um, the y-axis. Okay. So nicely they've given us the points here for um, x and y. So we have both um, inter limitation, uh, limits on the integral here. But we first have to redefine this f of x, y, in terms of x. And so um, what we're going to need to do is to pull out this um, argument of the natural log. And hopefully you remember from algebra, um, solving these kind of logarithmic equations, um, we would raise both sides uh, as a power on e to begin that and then simplify. I've included all of the steps here that are directly from your text to rewrite this. Um, but, you know, if you haven't looked at it yet, see if you can do this on your own. Again, the first step is to raise both sides to uh, as powers on um, Euler's constant. And remember, e to raise to the power of the natural log is just the argument. And so we get this. And then you just have to um, solve for x. Okay? So now that you have your function in terms of, of y, of g of y, and as we saw on the last slide, go ahead and find your derivative um, for g of y and plug it in to the surface area formula. So I hit pause again and see if you can solve this one. And then again, know that the limits um, on the integration are going to be the y value since we're revolving around y. So the second law, here's the formula in terms of revolving around y. We're integrating from 0 to the natural log of 2 of g of y times the square root of 1 plus um, the derivative of g of y squared. Again, if you um, square this term, add the 1 in there, and then factor it, you're going to get what's left um, in the uh, square root there. And it's a square root squared. So notice that these cancel out the square and the square root. And so we just get this quantity squared, which is a pretty straightforward integral to solve. And you can see the answer there as well. Um, so th the challenge in this problem was to remember that we have to rewrite um, the original given function from an f of x function defining that function, defining this equation in terms of x equals, which it may not have been really apparent there. So you have to go back to, and dig into some of your past algebra skills um, and um, insight and knowledge, former knowledge about logarithms and logarithmic equations and solving those. So you can see that we're building on a lot of mathematical skills that you've had before which really was, the, I think, the more challenging part of solving this um, equation because you have a function, you have a formula, you just had to rewrite that. Okay, so this is the end of 6.6, um, six, six, and we have one more section to cover before the chapter is over.